The Moore and Gullion Strangford Aspiring UNESCO Global Geopark takes in the scenic areas of the Moore Mountains, the Ring of Gullion and Strangford and Lakeale. A stunning backdrop to some remarkable people and places. Forged by nature, torn apart by volcanic activity and sculpted by ice. UNESCO Global Geoparks are areas with internationally important rocks and landscapes, managed responsibly for tourism, conservation and education. UNESCO Global Geoparks build on this foundation by integrating other aspects of heritage, such as archaeology, history, culture and biodiversity, collaborating with local communities to drive sustainable economic development and conservation. Together they make it a better place to work, live and visit. The Moore and Gullion Strangford Aspiring UNESCO Global Geopark has a story of over 400 million years of geological history. It charts the closure of the Iapetus Ocean and the fusing of two parts into what we know as the island of Ireland. It tracks its passage through tropical latitudes, the birth of the North Atlantic Ocean and finally the shaping of the landscape by ice during the last glaciation. A remarkable geological diversity within a relatively small geographical area makes it an ideal outdoor classroom for all ages. Hi, my name is Judith Caldwell and I work for the Moore and Gullion Strangford Aspiring UNESCO Global Day Park. Today I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of Camla Quarry and Camla Lake. If you haven't already, you can watch the other two videos in this virtual tour series, Cranfield Beach and Ballyhornan and Callard Point. Geological time can be hard to comprehend, so you can do this exercise with me. Stretch your arms as wide as possible. The tip of your left hand represents the creation of the Earth, around 4.6 billion years ago. The tip of your right hand is today. The Iapetus Ocean closed just over 400 million years ago. That's roughly around your right wrist, about where the dark rock in the quarry formed. Your right hand contains the opening of the Atlantic Ocean, where the light rock formed, and also the glaciations that followed. And the ends of your fingernails on the very end of your right hand are when humans arrived here. At the end of the tour, you will be able to describe the evidence for the closing of the Iapetus Ocean, understand how a ring dike is formed, and describe how Camla Lake was formed. The back wall of the quarry shows a clear contrast between dark grey rocks at the base and lighter pinkish brown rocks at the top. The Nuri granodiorite, the darker rocks, formed as a result of heat, generated by the closure of an Iapetus Ocean. The Iapetus Ocean separated the northern continent of Laurentia from the southern continent of Avalonia. Laurentia was composed of what is now North America, the north of Ireland and Scotland. Avalonia was made up of south of Ireland, England and Wales. As the ocean shrank, the continents on either side came together and eventually collided. The granodiorite of the Newry Igneous Complex, which stretches from here right over to Slave Crube, formed in association with this major earth movement. The heat generated produced huge volumes of magma, which led to the generation of three bodies of igneous rock known as plutons. The plutons are mostly composed of granodiorite, which is a type of igneous rock that is similar to granite but has a slightly different chemistry. Here it can be seen as a pale grey rock with a medium to coarse grained crystalline texture. The paler rocks are part of the Slave Gullion ring dike that formed during the Paleogene some 60 million years ago. This is an example of another granite type rock known as microgranite. It was intruded into a circular fracture that surrounded the edges of a magma chamber deep within the earth. Fracturing occurred as the magma drained away and was no longer able to support the surrounding rocks. This caused a line of cracks or fractures to develop around the periphery of the chamber, some 11 kilometres in diameter. 
The magma was squeezed into these fractures where it remained below the ground and solidified as a ring-shaped intrusion known as a ring dike. This feature is clearly expressed in the landscape as the Ring of Gullion, but only rarely do you get to see the granite-type rock that makes up the ring dike itself. The darker rocks are Silurian-aged sandstones and mudstones that formed on the bottom of the deep ocean approximately 430 million years ago. The heat produced when the Nuri Granodarite was intruded some 410 million years ago has altered the sandstone and mudstones. They have become hornfells, a fine-grained, dark grey rock with exceptional hardness and a smooth texture. The quarry is now inactive but in the past was excavated for building stone. The Sleeve Gullion Complex was the subject of a serious scientific debate over the mechanism of its formation. The many fractures in the quarry at this location helped to prove the theory of the ring dike. Just below Kamla Quarry is Kamlock or Kamla Lake and this is a good example of a ribbon lake. A glacier carved the valley during the last glaciation as it moved its way southwards towards Dundalk Bay. Glaciers work by plucking and abrading the surfaces with which they come into contact. The gouging out of this valley is an example of this. The particular length and narrowness of the valley is attributed to the major fault found along its length. This makes the surrounding rocks weaker and more susceptible to erosion. Movement along faults is not always immediately visible. In this case we can look at a geological map and see that the rocks that make up the circular ring dike have been displaced by nearly two kilometres. At the quarry the ring dike makes up the higher ground. On the far side of the lake the ring dike makes up the small hills to the northwest. To accompany this video, a suite of resources are available online for seven field sites within the Mourne Gullion Strangford Aspiring UNESCO Global Geopark, designed to equip post-primary school teachers with the information and knowledge to lead field visits to each of these sites, also providing materials for students to carry out activities in the field. Visit mournegullionstrangfordgeopark.com to access these resources.